So you found yourself in a situation where maybe you've sent some Litecoin to a Bitcoin address, or maybe you've sent some Bitcoin to a Bitcoin cash address, or something else like that, and uh, you're just not sure what to do. And uh, fortunately, there are a number of things you can do if you find yourself in this situation. And I'm just going to quickly run through how you can recover from this sort of situation in this video. It's really important to say at the beginning, though, if you're storing your crypto on an exchange and you've sent it to the wrong address type, then you're probably out of luck. While an exchange might be technically able to do this in some situations, they probably won't. Uh, the other big special case in this one is if you have Bitcoin Cash and you have managed to send that to a Bitcoin Segwit address, a Litecoin Segwit address, Vertcoin Segwit address, any of these Segwit addresses starting with A3. Uh, this video and the process in it is not applicable to you. Though the process in this video will work just fine if you've sent Bitcoin Cash to a legacy Bitcoin address. That's an address starting with a one. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content iMac to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Firstly, we're gonna be sending some Litecoin to a Bitcoin Segwit address. Then we're gonna send some Bitcoin Cash to a legacy Bitcoin address. Uh, and we're also going to use some of the official address converters uh, that will also allow us to send Bitcoin to a Litecoin Segwit address, as well as send some Bitcoin to a Bitcoin Cash address. I'm going to show you three ways to do this. The first way is if you're a software wallet user using something like Coinomi. The second thing I'll show you is how to use Electrum to do this, which is great because it means you can use your hardware wallet to do this without compromising uh, your seed or keys at all. And the last thing I'll show you is how to use Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool to be able to produce the private key that you then manually sweep in. Uh, and it's kind of the uh, last resort thing that you can do. Uh, all the usual warnings go there that you need to be downloading Ian Coleman's tool and running that in an offline air gapped environment. Because using tools like that, particularly if you're online at the time, is a really easy way to get fished and get robbed. So we'll just start off with a simple scenario where I've sent Bitcoin to the Bitcoin Cash account that is here in Coinomi. And what we're going to do is we see this Bitcoin Cash derivation path here. And we need the first three parts of that down to the zero H. And we are going to add a Bitcoin account into Coinomi using the Bitcoin Cash derivation path. And then we'll just put the derivation path that we noted down before and we'll say OK. And we will add that in. And as we can see, that transaction of Bitcoin that we sent there has now appeared. And once we've found the Bitcoin, we can then just use this to send it back to where it came from. Likewise, if you're using the Bitcoin.com wallet and manage to send some Bitcoin to uh, the Bitcoin Cash wallet, basically what you can do is you can just get the backup seed phrase from your Bitcoin Cash wallet and import a new Bitcoin wallet using that same phrase. And you can now see that this Bitcoin wallet has exactly the same receive address that was in the Bitcoin Cash wallet, meaning that the funds that were sent to this address will eventually appear in the Bitcoin wallet once they have had a chance to confirm. So to recover the Bitcoin that was sent to the Litecoin address, I'll just show you how to do that with the Electrum. If you'd sent the Bitcoin to a Litecoin account on your ledger, you can just go into that account in Ledger Live, uh, click the little spanner, and then go into Advanced Logs, and you will see the derivation path that we want here. So we basically just want these first numbers here. We're gonna say standard wallet. We have a hardware device. We found our ledger. The ledger is open with the Bitcoin app and we are just gonna change that to be a two. We are gonna say next. We're not gonna worry about encrypting the wallet file for the purpose of this video. And if we sit there, and there we can actually see the uh, Bitcoin that I sent to the Litecoin Segwit address. Uh, and just like with Coinomi, we can just send that back uh, to our Bitcoin account and keep operating as normal. We can use the same process to recover the Litecoin set to the Bitcoin account. And we're just using a fork of Electrum called Electrum LTC for this, or with uh, Electron Cash for the Bitcoin Cash. And I'll just show you how to do it with Litecoin. So if we just type in PC to PTP, the name doesn't matter. I'm going to say we have a hardware device. And we are just going to use the Bitcoin derivation path here to change that to be a zero. And there is our Litecoin. Now sending Bitcoin Cash to a Bitcoin legacy address 
is actually a special case if you have a hardware wallet in that most hardware wallets will still have like Bitcoin Cash splitting tools. So we'll actually just detect this Bitcoin Cash as unsplit Bitcoin Cash. So you can actually just use the add account workflow in Ledger Live uh, and you'll be able to recover the Bitcoin Cash just like that. And the last one I'll show you is how to use Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool. Uh, and again, this should only ever be your last resort. Find the derivation path of the address that you sent things to. Go into Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool. Type in the seed and the passphrase, if you have one, for the uh, wallet associated with the address you sent the funds to. You can select the coin, which is the one you're trying to have. So we select Bitcoin Cash. And now what we're going to do here is we are going to do a custom derivation path. So what we're going to do is select BIP32. We're going to use the derivation path out of Coinomi. And if we scroll down and change the address format to legacy address format, we can even see that the address that we're looking for is the same one that we sent it to in Coinomi. So what we can actually do is just get this private key right here. We can just say we want to sweep the wallet, scan the QR code, and it will actually find the Bitcoin cash that we sent there and allow us to sweep it straight back into our wallet all in one step. Generally, most cryptocurrencies will do a pretty good job of trying to prevent you from sending something to uh, addresses for another crypto. Uh, but honestly, that's not that consistent. It really depends on your wallet. And the other thing that's the massive wild card that's almost always the cause of these sorts of things I see is when people are using address converters. So whether they're using something that converts a Litecoin address to a legacy uh, pay to script hash address, or maybe they're using a cash address converter for Bitcoin Cash, um, you know, all of these kind of address converters are a complete disaster and something you need to use with a huge, huge, huge amount of caution. And honestly, if you are having to use them, you're better off trying to choose a different exchange or a different wallet. So there you go. I've showed you a few ways that you can do this using different wallets and different tools. And uh, I hope that makes it really clear uh, what the general principle is behind this. Uh, and it's simply a case of getting the right derivation path uh, and getting that into a wallet. Uh, a lot of software wallets and hardware wallets in their sort of official interfaces won't allow you to do this. Uh, so you'll often have to use something like Coinomi uh, for a software wallet or like Electrum if you're wanting to work with your hardware wallet. Though it is important to say that if you try and set a custom derivation path, particularly a non-standard one uh, in wallets like Coinomi, uh, it will often actually just treat that as a legacy address and not give you the right address format. So you'll need to do the uh, sweeping process that I showed you or use something like Electrum that allows you to specify both the script type and the derivation path. There's lots and lots of different combinations and permutations for how this can work. So the hope is that uh, this video has given you a really good idea about the principles. Uh, it will allow you to find an example that most closely matches your situation and give it a go yourself. Uh, but again, if you get stuck, uh, definitely leave a reply. Uh, and again, just be really, really careful uh, if you're using any of the methods that require you to be dealing with your seed phrase. And just don't go punching that into every piece of random software or website you find in an attempt to recover your funds in a hurry. And if you find yourself in a situation where you are looking to go entering your seed phrase into uh, some of these software tools, particularly if you're a hardware wallet user, uh, it's definitely worth just creating a new seed phrase, moving the rest of your crypto all onto there, and only then entering in your seed phrase into these tools so that even if someone gets their hands on it, uh, they won't be able to take the rest of your crypto. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.